to race three now, which features a reverse grid on the finishing order in race number two. Marcus Prilwitz starting on pole position for this one. We've got Robbie Fern alongside him on the front row, Anthony Trigali on the second row along with Shannon Smith, Stephen Zabbitt, Barry Butwell coming from a bit further back, and it's Robbie Fern in the Volvo who gets the jump on Marcus Prilwitz as they head through turns one and two for the first time. Burn getting the whole shot and taking the early advantage. Big news out of this race is that Stephen Zammett will wrap up the championship in this race if he finishes either ahead of or within one position of Barry Butwell. So that's the equation as far as the championship goes and it could be decided in this race. Robbie Fern under a bit of pressure from Marcus Prilwitz as they head down the hill for the first of six laps. Robbie Fern, a driver who has come on in leaps and bounds since purchasing that truck from John Thorpe. He gets quicker and quicker every time he gets behind the wheel. Then kept on us at the moment though by Marcus Prilwitz who looks to go around the outside through turn number nine. Contact and Robbie Fern off the road. And Prilwitz goes through to take the lead. So Robbie Fern, after getting such a good start and taking the initial lead, Goes off at turn number nine. Not sure if in fact there was contact with Prilwitz or if he did it on his own. Either way though, he has fallen right to the back of the pack and another lead change on the main straight with Shannon Smith getting past Marcus Prilwitz and here comes Stephen Zammett as well, storming through on the inside to take second position. Prilwitz again wanting to fight hard for that spot. But now the superior straight line acceleration of Stephen Zammett's number one Kenworth will play to his advantage as they head up the hill. And the four-time series champion is through into second position. Barry Butwell in behind his teammate Marcus Prilwitz. Will team orders come into play? We know how important it is for Butwell to be finishing ahead of Stephen Zammett to keep his title hopes alive. Zammett looking very, very racing. Looks to the inside of Shannon Smith at the fish hook. Smith just covering that position off for the moment. These reverse grid races always produce plenty of entertainment with the faster trucks having to fight their way through. Smith, a bit wide at turn nine. He invites Zammett to look up the inside. Smith moves back across to the right-hand side to cover off that position. Barry Butwell's going to get a spot here as well. Down on the inside of his teammate Marcus Prilwitz to move through into third position. Oh, and a spin for Craig Yardy at turn 10. Just locks the rear brakes and loops around the Isuzu. Manages to get going again without losing too much time. The other driver who's coming into the equation here, Frank Amoroso. He missed out on race two after a turbo failure in the morning warmer. But great to see him back out on the track now, the 2014 series champion, and he's challenging Marcus Prilwitz for what will be fourth position. And in fact, he's got the job done on Prilwitz as well, so Amoroso up to P4. Shannon Smith continues to lead the way ahead of Stephen Zammett. Barry Butwell in third spot, but needs to do better than that if he wants to have a chance of winning the championship in the final race for Super 3 comes up at the end of the weekend. But Zammett's had a good lap. He's closed onto the back of Shannon Smith. We know that Smith will play defensive. He'll make it as hard as he can for Zammett to be able to find a way through. A bit of a wiggle out of turn nine. Very defensive driving from Smith. Down the main straight, they will come to complete another lap. As this battle continues as well between Amoroso and Prilwitz. Smith's driving right down the apex of every corner to make it as hard as possible for Stephen Zammett to find a way through. We see as well that the wipers are coming on a few of these trucks too. There's been a lot of rain at Wakefield Park throughout the weekend. Slippery, challenging track conditions for the drivers to have to deal with. Robbie Fern now with the wipers going as well. As he closes up onto the back of Craig Yardy. A 
unfortunately Robbie Fern's son, Lachlan Fern, a non-starter in this race after a turbo failure in the Isuzu. Dark clouds looming on the horizon. Anthony Tringali's out there. He's done a great job of learning how to drive a truck in the dry weather conditions, but wet weather will be a whole different ball game. Zammert looking to the inside of Smith. And with the rain starting to fall, it's a corner by corner proposition in terms of how much available grip there is on the racetrack and the drivers will be feeling their way around, trying to understand just how late they can break and just how fast they can go around every corner. Very sideways for a couple of them through turn number 10. And Amoroso and Prilwitz are continuing their dice as well. That is the battle for positions four and five. Zammert still applying the pressure to Shannon Smith as the weather conditions get worse and worse. Still hasn't been able to find a way past though. And if these two keep battling then Barry Butwell might start to get involved in the contest for the lead as well because we know that the Max Superline is generally pretty good in the wet. Here comes Zammert, great run out of the fish hook, up the inside, and he will take the lead of race number three, round number four of the GC Tires Australian Super Truck Championship. Shannon Smith not done yet though. Late under brakes, they both go into turn 10. Smith tries to go all the way around the outside. They bang wheels on the exit, and it's a drag race down the main straight. have to cut, cut back to the shot of the race leaders, but Shannon Smith seems to have got the better exit. He has, so Zammert got the lead at the fish hook, but Smith, with a great run out of turn 10, has been able to take it back as we start the final lap. There's Craig Yardy in the light truck. He's a bit further back in the field. The battle for the lead is well and truly on. Stephen Zammert on target to wrap up the championship because Barry Butwell's dropped outside of the top three positions. It'll be super truck title number five for Stephen Zammett if he can bring it home from here. But he won't want to settle for second in the race. He is a true racer. And even with the championship situation as it is, he'll still want to take victory on the track and take the championship by being first across the line. A couple of corners left to run. Shaping up for a grandstand finish and contacts. That's the battle for third position. Krillwitz and Amoroso coming to blows. Amoroso spins. Krillwitz moves up his spot. And Amoroso slots back into position number four. Checkered flags out. And Shannon Smith will hold on to take the win. But Stephen Zammert, by coming home in second, clinches his fifth Australian Super Truck title and joins the greats of national truck racing in Australia. His name goes up there with the likes of Bob Middleton, Rodney Crick, and other drivers who've been legends of this sport. You know, I'm feeling really good. We've um, we done what we wanted to do. We, we finished in front of Barry. Unfortunately, had a turbo failure, but um, you know, at the end of the day, that's motor racing. That's what we all, we're all in it for. And um, yeah, no, it's a full credit to my whole team to keep that truck running all weekend and keeping it reliable. We've actually sealed the championship with one race to go, so we're, we're, we're quite ecstatic about that. And um, really excited going to this half race, knowing that we're already the champion. So there's just none of them butterflies or a lot of pressure on my shoulders, you know. So I'll um, definitely give it all I've got and, and, and still racing like I normally would. And it's just what we do. We like putting on a good show, you know. It's a, it's a really good sport, really good category. and. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you win, lose, draw, we're all out there having a good time, put a good show on and, and that's what it's all about. Truck plays fairly well, yeah. There was a bit of action with Frank for a few laps and Frank came off second best unfortunately, but that's, that's life. Yesterday really the truck didn't get punished at all because of, because of the wet weather, you're really driving to the conditions means you're driving fairly slow. 
I haven't even thought about the points to be honest. At the moment I've just raced myself as far as lap times go, that's, that's all. Um, the boys did a good job getting back uh, back on the track after a big whack off Marcus, but it didn't feel that bad. Um, I sort of noticed when I went into the top corner and lost it there and um, I got a call over the radio so there's a fair bit of damage and look at the back of it the mud guards flying. But um, they bent the chassis and ripped all the sway bar and stuff off so yeah.